Hey, what's going on gang? Welcome to your 29th Vue.js tutorial and in this video we're going to take a first look at input binding. Alright, so I just said we'll take a first look at input binding, but guess what? I lied because we have looked at it in previous tutorials as well. We use the vModel directive to bind data to input fields and that's pretty much what we're going to do in this tutorial, only this time we're going to take it a couple of steps further and also apply it to some kind of practical example. Now the example I'm going to apply it to is to create some kind of blog and we're going to start that in this tutorial and then take it on few, uh, through future tutorials as well. So this blog is going to allow us to add blogs, list blogs, etc. And we're going to link it up to Firebase eventually. In this tutorial, we're just going to focus on input binding and creating that initial kind of form to add a new blog. So thus far, we just have this root component, this app.view, and it is pretty simple and empty at the minute. An empty template, a pretty much empty object, and also just this style at the bottom with a margin of zero for the body and a font family of Nunito semi-bold. Now you might have this on your computer, you might not, it doesn't really matter, just so it looks a little bit nice in the browser, that's all. Okay, so that's all we have at the minute, just this root component. So we wanna create a new component now for our form to add a new blog, and that's where we're gonna do our data binding. So let's create that component in this components folder. Create a new file, and we'll call this add blog.view then what I want to do is copy all of this stuff out of here, this empty component template, and paste it in right there. I'm just going to delete this body style because we don't need it in both components. All right, so now we have the kind of flesh of this component. Let's import it into this app.view because this is where we're going to nest it, okay? So let's import, and we're going to import add blog from, and then it's dot forward slash to say current directory, then in the components file, then forward slash add blog dot view. Okay, so now we've imported it, let's register that component so we can use it in this one. So we'll say components, this is an object, and inside this object we'll register our add blog component. So the tag is gonna be called add hyphen blog. And this is the way I like to register components by adding a hyphen. Some people prefer camel case, I prefer hyphen. So this is gonna be add blog that we just imported right here and let's place a comma after components so now we can nest it right here so we'll just say add hyphen blog to nest that okay let's save it now if we view this in a browser at the minute nothing is going to show because there's actually nothing in this add blog so let's start to flesh out this form in here so the first thing I want to do is give this div an ID and this is going to be for stylistic purposes later on so we'll call this add blog Okay, after this we want to have a h2, and the h2 will say add a new blog post, and then after that we need our form. So this is where all the input binding is going to go inside here. Now we're just going to have two fields for now, we're going to have an input field for the title of the form, and also a text area for the blog content. So let's do a label for both of these as well, we'll say blog title for the first label, and then we need that input field which is going to be of type equal to text. It's also going to be required. And we'll come back to this in a minute to do our data binding. Uh, then we'll need another label for the blog content. And underneath that, let's do our text area like so. Okay, so now we have these two fields. I also want to do a preview area so we can preview what we're typing into this before we post the blog. So let's create a div with an ID equal to preview. And then inside this preview area, we want to be able to preview the blog. So as we type something in here, it's going to be in the preview section. When we type something in the text area, it's going to be in the preview section, just so we can see what the blog's going to look like, basically, before we save it to the database. So let's have a H3, some kind of title, to say preview blog. And then below that, we want to output the blog title. So I'll say P, and then blog title. And we're going to output that in a minute. And also, we need a P tag for the blog content, and also we're gonna output that in a minute. Okay, cool, so now we've kind of got this form fleshed out. Let's just save it and make sure it's on the page and it's all working. There it is. Okay, so this currently looks a little bit rubbish, so I'm just gonna add some styles now to make it look a little bit better first of all. So let's come down to the style tags, and all I'm gonna do is copy and paste this from my repository, because this is not a CSS course, this is a view course, so very basic styles. So we're saying everything, this is the wildcard selector right there, everything within the blog, give this box sizing border box. 
the add blog, a kind of like overall container, which is this thing here. We're saying there we want a margin of 20 pixels and auto, so it's going to centralize that on the page, max width 500 pixels. And the labels are displayed as block with a bit of a margin as well. The input with a type of text and the text area are displayed as block, width 100% and padding 8 pixels. Uh, the preview area is going to have some padding, a border and also some margin and the H3 has got a margin top of 10 pixels. So these are all very basic standard styles and if we view it in a browser now, it just looks a little bit better. Okay, so this is the idea. We want to now bind our input field so that when we type something in here, it appears down here and we can store that in the view instance if we want or the component instance rather. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take a look at this data binding. So like I said, we've already done this kind of input binding in previous tutorials and it was just using vModel. So again, we're going to use vModel to bind to these data fields. So we'll say vModel is equal to something. And then we need to give this a name, this model a name. So we'll call it title. So then whatever we type in here is going to be stored in this title variable or property. Okay. So we can also add a vModel down here on the text area. So we can say v hyphen model is going to be equal to something else, uh, content for example. Okay, so now if we wanted to, we could access the title and content and output it right here. So I could output title and I could output content here. Okay, so I'll save this and let's just view it in a browser. So if I start to type something here, hmm, nothing happens. Let's click refresh title still nothing happens and that's because we need to add this thing right here and this thing right here to the data and down here if i um, right click over here and go to inspect and if we view in the console we can see these errors right here we can see title is not defined on the instance content is not defined on the instance so we need to add those two down here in the data so let's just say title and that's going to be just an empty string to begin with and also content and that's going to be an empty string to begin with now if we save this view it in a browser as i type in here we can see it down here in the preview as i type in here we can see this down here in the preview cool so just a couple of things before we move on normally when i'm doing input binding like this if the fields are related for example this is related to this because they're both part of the same blog then what I like to do is store both of these fields on the same kind of property, the same object. So I like to do something like this, blog.title, then blog.content, okay? So basically we're gonna have one object right here, blog, which stores all of these different related fields. So then we can keep it all within that one blog object. I just like that to keep all of the components of this form together, all of the moving parts, right? So down here in the data, we're just going to update it so that we have instead, we'll copy that blog, right? And this is going to be an object. And inside that, we have these different properties. That way, we're just keeping everything to do with the blog in one object. All right. That's how I like to do it. So I'll save that and I'll show you that it still works. It doesn't work yet because I've not done a blog dot title there and blog.content there but if I save now then check this out this works now okay cool so now I want to kind of take this one step further basically if I refresh over here as I'm typing it's updating over here and as I'm typing it's updating over here now I don't necessarily want this behavior right I want to be able to type something in here not show down here then when I tab to the next input field then it shows okay so I can do that by using an input modifier. So much like we did modifiers on our events, we can do them on input fields as well. So I can say vModel.lazy, and that is gonna do what I just said. So if I refresh now, if I start typing, nothing appears down here until I click tab, then it appears. That's a nice little feature, I quite like that, okay? So I wanna also add this to this one down here. I wanna say lazy. And then the same would happen for this. All right, tab out and it appears down there. Now, just one more thing, um, the blog content I wanna place underneath this right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually come over here and cut this from there. And I'm gonna do another paragraph tag like so and place that in blog content like so. So now when I add blog content in, 
I'm just going to copy it and paste this quite a few times so we've got a little bit of content to see. Now when I add that in, it's down below here and it just looks a bit better. Again, we can add the blog title in and it appears there. Okay, so now we've seen how to add vModel to these different input fields so that we can store them in a central object, the blog object in different properties and we can output them to a preview area. In later tutorials, what we are gonna do is take this content and we're gonna push it to a database, but that's in the future. For now, I just wanna concentrate on these input fields and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at checkboxes and binding data to those.